language and culture describes God. It differs according to language and culture. But I actually think that numbers do as well. Numbers describe God. And they are actually an invariable field. That is to say that they never change. I think if you can observe patterns of numbers, I think that you can come to some conclusions. So one of the things that I do believe is that the numbers 12 and 7 and their connection to one another may give us some insight as to the mechanics of life. You shared earlier, uh, you talked about, I don't know if it was astrophysics or mechanics Mm. with the body and spirituality and God. Can Mm. you just go over that? Just uh, Yeah, okay. Give me a take on that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, um, you know, culture and language, they vary. So cultures will change and uh, language changes. Like English is going to be a different language in like 10 or 20 years, 30 mm-hmm. years, 40 years, slightly. But over 100 years, it I will feel be. Like right. in, I feel like our language changing. is changing so rapidly yeah. right now. Right. Uh, t- every 10 years, there's some, uh, there's, there's dialogue and dialect mm. that's being completely misinterpreted. I misinterpret it all, all the time when I'm talking to teenagers. Yeah. I'm just thinking, what the heck is going on? Yeah. Am I the one that's uh, yeah. not up to date or is the English yeah, it, language is going it's downhill? It's changing, right? And culture, just like a glacier, you can put a coffee shop on top of a glacier. Mm-hmm. But come back in 10 years' time, that coffee shop's going to have to move it again. You yeah. Know yeah. I mean? Because <laughs> just like a glacier and its periphery is always ever so slightly moving, right? And in, right. in the periphery, the language, mm-hmm. oh, it's like a glacier. It's always moving. Mm-hmm. But what never moves is numbers. Mm-hmm. And numbers are the invariable field. So if you think of our solar system for a second, so we have an invariable field. It's like a line that all of the planets are stuck to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, they vary in degree according to, you know, differing amounts of degree, right? Mercury being six degrees, it's the furthest off. Jupiter, 0.3 degrees off. Mm-hmm. Earth, 1.6 degrees. Mars, 1.7. So it's all different, right? So... When you talk about spirituality, the reason why I bring this up is because I actually think that language and culture Mm -hmm. describes God. For sure it does. Yep. But it it differs according to language and culture, you see. Mm -hmm. But I actually think that numbers do as well. Numbers describe God. And they are actually an invariable field. That is to say that they never change. So, So just follow me for a moment. And so I think if you can observe patterns of numbers, I think that you can come to some conclusions okay so let me let me explain what i mean by that Mm -hmm. so one of the things that i do believe is that the numbers 12 and 7 and their connection to one another may give us some insight as to uh the mechanics of life okay let me let me share so have you ever noticed how 12 and 7 are seem to have a really strong relationship like our calendar our gregorian calendar 12 months and seven days Music. If I had a piano right here and I was playing random notes, just random, right. you, you, you wouldn't appreciate it. Right. But the moment I go into something called harmony, which is taking 12 notes and playing them in a circuit of seven, something in your eardrum goes, ooh, I like that. Mm. Why? Because something about 12 and seven, your eardrum goes, that's good. Mm-hmm. You notice the rib cage. You've got 12 ribs that yep. connect in seven places in the sternum. Take a look at your spine. Those 12 ribs come from 12 vertebrae, and then you got seven cervical vertebrae in your neck. Your neck is made of seven, so 12 and seven. Your brain operates on 12 watts of energy, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes in your head. Take a look at your palm. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Mm-hmm. You turn that around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 12 and seven. Mm-hmm. So, why is the numbers 12 and 7 repeated over and over and over again? So the diameter of the earth, mm-hmm. you know, you get the circumference and the diameter. Yep. Yeah. You know what it is? 12,000? 12,700. 12,700. 12,700 kilometers. <laughs> Why is that? Why do we count 12 signs of the zodiac, but we count seven luminaries? That is to say the naked eye of the human being can look and see seven in our galaxy. Mm-hmm. Right. Sun. Moon, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. Right. Seven. Twelve, space is 12 and 7. And mm-hmm. honestly, it, it goes on even further. And so the question, the riddle is this then. 
what's making the pattern repeat? Do you have any, any thoughts? Any ideas? It's actually a very simple answer. <clears throat> Not a clue. <laughs> You're looking at it right now. It's light. Mm. So would you agree with me that light is the foundation of life? Or Roy G. Biv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, the spectrum. Purple, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, which I, of course is seven. Right. But would you agree with me that light is the foundation of life? Like in the sense that without yes. life or without yeah, light, light, you don't have life, you see. And here's what's interesting is mm -hmm. light patterns itself according to 12 and 7. So let me explain. You got seven colors that are firmly bound to the circle, mm -hmm. which is 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Why is it 360 degrees? Why isn't it 400 degrees or 500 degrees? Well, that's a physics question, and it comes down to the number 12. Yeah, it's, divid it's just divisible it's, by 12. Yeah, it's 30 times 12. Mm -hmm. And so light orients itself, and the rainbow is, when we see the rainbow, we might see a portion of it, we mm -hmm. might see half of it, right. but the rainbow in its fullness is a full circle. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's governed by pi, 3.14159. Right. And 360 degrees is 12, so you got 12 and 7. And so my theory is this, is that, you know, the Bible and many religions say that God is light. Mm -hmm. And so you and I, by observing this pattern, we can say, we can step back and say, we are fundamentally beings of light. What you're experiencing is the electromagnetic spectrum. What you're experiencing is an electromagnetic frequency. Mm -hmm. And it's all based on numbers. Language and culture give meaning and description mm -hmm. to the numerical experience or the numerical existence. Mm -hmm. And light is its foundation. And I believe that God is light. You know, in a, in a dark room, if you bring a candle... Mm -hmm. You'll be gravitated towards the light. And I find it interesting then, if you take a look at the God of the Bible, mm -hmm. why is it that the God of the Bible in the tabernacle wants a menorah of seven candles, and for the priests, he wants 12 showbreads? So what why are showbreads? Showbreads were every seven days, the, the high priest would come in and bring 12 loaves of bread that would just mm -hmm. sit there. You know, like you might go to a faux place and you might see an orange or something like that to uh, Buddha or something Buddha, like that. Yep. Right. So in some ways, there was this sacred act of bringing bread. Mm. Bread is sustenance of life, you right. see. And the number 12 is the number for governance. So we call 12 disciples, 12 nations. We have 12 jurors, you see. Mm -hmm. And um, 12, when when you take, and, and here's, also, here's also a key into this mosaic, if you will, is this. If you take 12 and you collapse it, any time that there's frequent wavelength frequencies, like let's say in the ocean, they're coming towards the shore, mm -hmm. and those highest distorted waves, they begin to collapse. They reorganize themselves as they get shorter. They go from 12, and here's what happens. When you take a 12 and you break it down, mm -hmm. most likely it'll turn to 7, and here's why. 2 and 5, 1 and 6, 3 and 4, you see? You can have groups of full sevens and five. Why is that important? It's just like in two dice. If you have two dice and who have 12, mm -hmm. most common, the, the most reason why common is seven, is the reason why seven. it's lucky is because 12, when it collapses, mm -hmm. most commonly reorganizes itself to seven. That's why the surfer will say the seventh wave is most commonly the strongest because it reorganizes itself. Three times four is 12. Three plus four is seven. Right. So you talk about spirituality and, and what, what I believe in God, and, and yeah. it's coupled by two things. My experience. Mm -hmm. My experience of just like having had experiences. But then there are sciences, and there's arithmetic that seems to me that points to a creator. Yep. And why would this tent thousands of years ago be of significance well, it's significant for many reasons, but one of the reasons to me is because it holds the pattern that everything else does. And religion claims to teach the mechanics of life mm. in the sense that every religion says, you know, give and you shall receive. That's a principle. It's a mechanic of life. You know what right. I mean? Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Show mercy and you'll be, you know what I mean? Those are mechanics of life. Mm -hmm. And so numbers are actually describing the mechanics of life in the sense that they never change you know you'll always have 12 ribs to seven you know what i mean yeah right and so 
when we actually describe it from a numerical sense, I think in some ways it's, it's a language of the divine. And that's what Galileo Galilei said, is that mathematics is the language of the divine. Mm. And so coming back to that is that I have formed, I guess, a theology which holds both intention that I have this experience, but also I think some good grounds um, to believe that there is, in fact, a higher power. There has power. to be practicality yeah. as well. Yeah. Thanks that's for letting me share that, by the way. I know no, sometimes no people are like, well, that's a lot of 12s and 7s, but yeah. I find it interesting, you know, no, it's, that it is it's, interesting. it's like the stitching of life. I got a question. Who is... I've he? never thought of numbers that way, by the way. I've mm. never got that no. into depth right. with certain numbers. You're so. going <laughs> to be the most popular kid in the next party. <laughs> He's going to be sharing can all the information. Can I share one last that. thing with you Please. before yeah, I... Yeah. The human body... Or... Let me explain it this way. The human body is formed by numbers as well. You and I have one mind, Mm -hmm. and the windows to that mind are the eyes. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that you have actually never seen yourself. You've seen your eyes and your nose and your mouth and stuff like that, but the essence of who you are, Mm -hmm. you've never seen. We're never, yeah. We are unseen. I remember my grandma, her funeral, she had an open casket funeral. There was my grandma, Cece. Was she there? Well, her body was. The part that's actually invisible wasn't, right? Mm. And which is, that quote is so true that the most valuable things in life you can't buy, you can't sell, and it's consciousness. And that mm. thing, of course, has been debated for thousands and thousands of years. What is that consciousness? Mm-hmm. Now, it's interesting to me that most religions actually describe God as the unseen one, the one who is unseen, mm-hmm. the one who is unseen, the most high. Now, I believe that we're made in the image of God, and I'm sure that you guys do too, mm-hmm. that we're made in the image of God, that God took the unseen part of himself mm-hmm. and hosted it in this thing that we call the human body. Right. And that mm-hmm. is one, and it's unseen. That manifests into eyes, which are, I would say, is almost like the windows to the one, right? It is the most authentic representation mm-hmm. of the essence of who you are. Then, and that would represent almost the temple, we actually call this the temple right here, mm-hmm. temple of the unseen one. Then co- what comes is what flows is a throne. One, two, three. Speech is not a system of one. It's a system of three. In the, in the nose, you've got to have a bit of a three, don't you? Mm-hmm. The throne where God speaks, where man speaks, where his life is ruled, rulership. Then you have the voice box, which sit on the fourth cervical vertebrae of seven, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Four. Priests, you know, have you ever noticed how they wear a square box right here? Priests do? Yeah, priests. Yeah, oh. it's the collar. Yeah, exactly. So you got one, two, three, four. Why do they wear a, and we call it a voice box, mm. a box. Why? Because it's the four. Yeah, because it's got four sides to it. Yeah, exactly. And it's sitting on the fourth cervical vertebrae. And you can also say this, is that the middle of seven is the four. You see that? Mm-hmm. Mm. It's the four. Have you ever wondered... Four is the only one that has an axis in it, a cross in it, mm-hmm. because in the middle of the circle is what a cross. At the, at the center of the circle is a cross, 90 degrees cross, right? right. At the center of the seven, and anything that is a, in, in life is circuitry, mm-hmm. always seven, days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, colors, purple, indigo, blue, music, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And at the center of it is the four, which is the cross. Have you ever noticed that before? How at the center of the seven, there's a cross. It's the axis. And a cross represents a square because, right, you got one, two, three, four. And then what you have is you got five, which is power. One, two, three, four, five. Five represents like the Pentagon. Why is a Pentagon building representing power? It's the most powerful building on, on the planet. The Olympic rings. Mm-hmm. Five, if you want to power somebody, if you want to overpower somebody, it's, it's your hands. Mm-hmm. And then what you have is you got the ribs. The ribs, I think, represent the six, which is 12, 12, and 12. The six is representative of man in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Man, when, it, when in numbers, is most commonly thought of as six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six things that come from our body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the rib, man was taken from Eve from in Abrahamic religions, mm-hmm. which, of course, is the six. And then the heart is the seven. Because it is the circuitry of the body. What is the circuitry of the body? What it right now is pumping little circles all throughout your body. Mm-hmm. Literally beating in frequencies of seven. The seventh heartbeat is ever so slightly stronger. It's your heart. And the seventh color, red. Purple, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. It's the last color. It's, it's 
It's the heart. And then what you have is you have the abdomen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight, which I believe is represents infinity. Infinity, yep. Yeah, it's it's the intestines. Mm -hmm. It is also the birthplace where you where do you and I grow? Mm. In the eight. Mm -hmm. In the infinity, right? right. we are we being fed in our mouths there? No, we're being fed in our eight and our stomachs, yeah, right. right? And then at the base of the eight, of course, you have the nine, which is the genital. And nine represents the seed of mathematics. It's the furthest number from the one. Mm -hmm. It is big. And in the genital, of course, we have infinite, infinite potential. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. So the six and the nine represent man, which is finite. Nine, which is beyond infinite, which is ultimate. It's the yin and the yang. Right. It's the positive and the negative. And the nine, Abraham was circumcised at the age of nine, mm -hmm. or sorry, 99. And it takes nine months for the seed to come to fruition to bring forth another human mm -hmm. being. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I actually believe that the human body is made by God, but according to the pattern, which of course is numerical, which shouldn't surprise people because everything fundamentally comes down to numbers. Mm -hmm. The way in which I grew in my mother's womb was according to a Fibonacci sequence, you know, mm -hmm. and every tree is different. Why? Because fun at a fundamental level, it comes down to the sequence of arithmetic that that tree comes to being, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so I actually find, and it's odd for some people, I actually find hope in numbers because what numbers do is they give me, uh, they point to a designer mm -hmm. and it's invariable. It'll never change. It'll always be the same. Do yeah. we know anything about DNA? Yeah. DNA is, uh, well, I, I'd love to talk about DNA. I'd love to hear from you. Are, what do, what do uh, you think I just about DNA? Are the numbers connected to DNA? Yeah, I'm very mm. curious because we're talking about phys like what we physically see. Yeah. We're not really talking about our genetics or our, our DNA to see what's like beyond the microscope. Yeah. Any thoughts from you? I, no, I've, been, I, I've done a lot of talking. No. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> no I've, yeah. I've, yeah, I've not heard anyone put together yeah. something like so this. So I'll just so. say it in a short form because I feel like this is a longer conversation. <laughs> but, sure. but have you seen the Fibonacci sequence, which is like a coil like this? It's a coil, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, have you also seen a, a shofar, which is a ram's horn that kind of goes like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are many, there are some physicists who actually believe that, you know, the Fibonacci sequence is at a fun, at a, you know, core level. It's, it's, it's the way in which life grows. Mm. It's the unfolding of life. Right. And DNA is a coil, mm -hmm. a really long one. Yeah. And so what I believe is that DNA is like the binary code of man. Yeah. Right. One, the ones and zeros almost, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I believe it's five different proteins that organize themselves, reorganize themselves over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that coils. And so, uh, I believe that DNA is, is representative of the fact that we've been made in a divine way that you can't, you know, I think it would take, um, I heard it just this the other day that it would take somewhere close to a thousand computers. I know computers are strong uh, for days and days and days to compute even one iota of what your body is doing right now. Mm -hmm. The fact that the, you got seven trillion cells in your body all right now. They're all doing their, doing their thing. own thing. Yeah. Right now they're digesting right now. They're, uh, healing something there. You're right. You know what I mean? There's the amount of things. So DNA is just one of those things that just, it delves into, um, the fact that I think that we've been intelligently designed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that, uh, it's a, it's an interesting thing to talk about for sure. Yeah. How Tell me a little bit about your faith. Um, like in how, Cause you're Sikh. So I'm a Sikh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have the same thing as you. We yeah. believe in one God. Yeah. And uh, they're omnipresent. Wow. Uh, free will. Yeah. Right. So with with free will, there comes good. There comes mm -hmm. bad. Because mm -hmm. some people, when we get into a discussion of uh, 
if God exists, then mm. why is there evil in the world? Yeah. Well, if you believe in free will, then you're going to have good and you have to take bad with it. Yeah. There has okay. to be yin and yang. There has to be, if there's darkness, yeah. the only way to remove darkness is with light. Yeah. So there's portions to that. And the creation of our religion was through our very first guru, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Wow. And that was a social and political change in the landscape of what was happening. Because right. there was a lot of turmoil with the Mughals, with the Hindus. Wow. And uh, I mean, if we just look at the history of 200 years of our 10 gurus, yeah. the guruship was passed from one to the next to the next. And we believe that mm. it's um, our gurus are a co direct connection from God. Right. So the word that's being spoken by them is yeah. directly from God. Wow. There's no misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. what we have, what they have said and what they yeah, have yeah. told us. And we have um, Holy Scriptures, which is called the yeah. Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah. And the derivative meaning of Sikh mm -hmm. is to learn. Wow. So as Sikhi, because yeah. we, we're Sikhs, we are to yeah. learn. No, and yeah. our Guru Granth Sahib Ji is the way of life. Wow. Because they're giving us steps of yeah. how we should be conducting ourselves on a daily basis. Yeah. So we don't fall into the trap of following a human being. Because the last thing we want to do is fall into the tricks of other people of yeah. telling us what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. Instead, we can just find our answers from our holy book. Wow. Right? That's cool, man. I want to say I just respect any person who is on the journey to find God. And I just have so much honor and respect uh, for six. Yep. And, you know, I think I've had some really great food before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys are very hospitable. Mm -hmm. And... um. I think your family units are so strong. Uh, they're something that I think I've seen before, and I go, wow, like, there's so much to appreciate about your culture. Yeah, religion and culture, they're tied mm -hmm. in pretty tightly, mm -hmm. especially in our community. Yeah. Um, I honestly believe that if you have faith in God, you have yeah. faith in family. Yeah. It's always God, family, business. Yeah. It yes. always goes in that order for it's me good. personally. Yeah. And the way I think about it is there's God's laws, there's mm -hmm. man's laws, and if we're living to our highest potential, we're sure. following God's laws because man yeah. laws, like man's laws are always, they can be interpreted. Yeah. At one point, slavery was uh, allowed. Yeah. It got abolished because mm -hmm. why? Because it, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't own human mm -hmm. beings, right? Mm -hmm. But God's laws say that everybody is free. Mm. So are we following man's laws or God's mm -hmm. laws? If, if we were actually following God's laws at that point, mm -hmm. there shouldn't have been any slavery. Mm -hmm. But people were using that in a way to benefit themselves. Mm, yeah, uh, And it has to come sure. from, I like to employ common sense in a lot of situations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what the situation is, mm -hmm. like common sense, common sense says if somebody is being harmed, you step up yeah. and you just take care of what yeah. needs to be taken care of. You yeah. don't need to think about what's happening in surrounding areas. Yeah. Just try to figure out how you can help these people. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah religion, there's a, uh, there's also three main tenets in our religion that we follow mm. is uh, we praise God at all times. Mm. Uh, we earn an honest living yeah. and we build equity within our community. Oh, wow. So how do you step out of bounds if your mind is pure? Yeah. Your heart is pure by doing the right thing. Yeah. And you're, you're emptying out your pockets to help out yeah. your neighbors. Yeah. There's no way of going wrong. Yeah, that's true. Right? Wow. That's so respected. It's, it's basic, and it goes mm -hmm. back down to common sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking it has to be practical. It has to be common sense. Yeah. And if we're just following that, then we should yeah. be okay, right? Yeah. And I think faith should be simple. As It as shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't be complicated. Mm -hmm. As fun as it is to talk about science and all those kind of things, and I, mm -hmm. I do like it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, knowledge kind of puffs up sometimes, mm -hmm. and it doesn't uh, lead to sometimes spiritual growth, actually. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the island of knowledge uh, I guess it's an illustration, but I want you to imagine all of your knowledge is one island. Everything you've ever learned, every time you've made a mistake, twisted an ankle, all of what you have mm -hmm. is on an island. And what surrounds you, the ocean, is the unknown. Mm -hmm. And now what science is and what living is, is accruing the unknown onto your island, mm -hmm. growing your island, growing your knowledge. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. As your island grows, so does the distance that separates you from the very thing that you're 
after. That is to say, as your island grows, so does the circumference, mm -hmm. the distance mm -hmm. that separates you from the very thing that you're chasing. Mm -hmm. And so the philosophical tension is, is it better to have a smaller island that is rich? You may not know everything. You meet people like that. Mm -hmm. Kids. They're innocent. Mm -hmm. they're and their the islands are so rich. Very, very much so, yeah. Their yeah. islands are, are vibrant. And then you meet cognitive scholars who have three doctor degrees. And they know everything. Yeah. Massive island. But it's a desert. Yeah. Right? And so knowledge is a beautiful, wonderful thing, but we got to be careful. And that's why, you know, the Adam and Eve story, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, it's, it's knowledge that she was after. And when it actually gives us a description of Eve, when she sees the fruit, she says it was good to the eyes. It looked good. Right. It was pleasing to the taste and last one, and it gives you wisdom. Ooh, you'll know more. Yeah. And uh, so I'm so encouraged when I hang out with my kids, and I actually teach Sunday school in my church because I love being around kids. I was speaking at an elementary school today, uh, 500 kids. Hey, how, sorry, I don't mean yeah. to cut you off. How yeah. is your experience with talking to kids? What are you sharing? Because obviously we went yeah. into some pretty, uh, pretty good details. Yeah, so today, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, like, what am I sharing to like, would I, no, the thing is, is that when I speak to elementary schools, I talk a lot about kindness. And I don't really share the plane crash story, actually. Uh, in most elementary schools, I don't. I just, I share my story of immigrating here, and I take all of the stories that 35 years of my life of, uh, you know, various and different things that have happened in my life that aren't the plane crash. And mm -hmm. I kind of weave it together into uh, about a 45 minute talk to students, mm -hmm. um, really encouraging them to show kindness to one another. Now today I actually did bring up the plane crash story, but I gave like a G version of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Not Didn't even much detail. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. Cause you know what happened one time is that I was <laughs> actually speaking. Yeah. I, at one time I had a, had, and I was even given like a G version of it. Yeah. But then this kid started crying and it was really hard because in this assembly, you're wanting to comfort that person. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, buddy, I'm okay, you know. Um, but you also want to move on. But so, I, but it got taken care of. But so I'm very, very careful. That was like six years ago. But right. Um, yeah, I speak to high schools. I speak to middle schools. And, um, you know, we've talked a lot about God on this podcast, which is awesome. I like talking about God. But uh, when I'm at public schools, of course, I don't talk about that. I, I'm Why more, is that? Uh, I Who's think, barring you from talking about God? Yeah, I know. Hey. <laughs> well, if I want that's a, a touchy suppose, topic, yeah, if is. I want a, if I want a job in the public system, then that's the case, right? Yeah. yeah.